Hello and welcome to the Thursday, April 25th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Three years ago, Raw published uh, some scripts to make it easier to read the NVD database, in particular on Windows systems. Well, uh, Raw updated these scripts now in order to adapt them to the newer version of the API that is being offered by NIST. If you're interested, uh, more details, you can find them in Rob's diary from today. And Cisco released a blog post together with patches for three different vulnerabilities in response to some attacks that they have observed taking advantage of these vulnerabilities. Affected are Cisco ASA and Firepower devices, and the vulnerabilities being addressed here are really more the privilege escalation part. The initial attack vector, how the attacker originally got access as an authenticated user is not included here and they say they don't really know. So one assumption is that likely that initial attack vector was just some weak username and password combination that was brute forced or found somewhere else. Cisco believes that the attacker started working on this back in July and in January started actually launching the first attacks using this particular pattern and set of vulnerabilities. Out of the three vulnerabilities, there are two particular interesting. Uh, one is a local code execution vulnerability. The other one, a command injection vulnerability. Between the two, I think there's at least one sort of directory traversal vulnerability. For example, one of these vulnerabilities allows an attacker who is able to restore a backup to overwrite files that they're not supposed to overwrite. That's very common when you're extracting zip files and the like and not properly validating the paths the files are being written into that you end up overwriting files that you don't intend to overwrite. But overall, of course, this sort of continues the pattern we have seen over the last few years where perimeter devices are being attacked more and more patch your Cisco ASA and firepower devices. But given that uh, None of these patches affect sort of the initial access. I wouldn't overly expedite these patches. If you're patching, also follow Cisco's advice to look for already compromised devices. They do offer some tips what to look for. Definitely do that uh, just in case someone was able to launch this attack against one of your devices. And Citizen Lab released a paper with details regarding weaknesses in encryption used by various Pinjin keyboard apps. Pinjin is a way how you type Chinese characters on Western keyboards. And with that, of course, many of the affected users and devices are in China or targeting the Chinese market. The encryption weaknesses are for the most part, fairly straightforward and could reveal uh, keystrokes as they're being typed by the user. One fundamental problem here and one reason why the encryption matters is also that many of uh, these uh, keyboards are using cloud components in order to, for example, do things like predicted typing, which necessitates the keystrokes being actually sent across the network. This is not the first time that vulnerabilities like this were found and you should in general always be careful with these add-on keyboards. They may make typing faster, uh, they may make things easier to use even for non-Chinese speakers, even for English speakers, uh, there are some keyboards like this. But uh, personally, I would stay away from anything that sends your keystrokes across the network. And a couple of miscellaneous vulnerabilities. There is an update for the Node MySQL 2 library. That's a library that allows a Node JavaScript to connect to MySQL. The vulnerabilities sound bad at first, like a remote code execution, but note that in order to exploit these vulnerabilities, an attacker already has to be able to connect to the database using a Node MySQL 2. So this is not something that a random user connecting to a website could necessarily 
exploit still is something that you probably do want to address given that it could lead to remote code execution on the database server. But several lot, Kokorin uh, did uh, publish a blog post with some of the vulnerabilities he found. Not all of them have been addressed at this point in part. They're going public in order to uh, put some pressure here on the uh, Node MySQL 2 team in order to patch the remaining vulnerabilities. And if you're using one of the popular Netgear Nighthawk routers, make sure your firmware is up to date. The latest update does fix a buffer overflow vulnerability that could lead to an authentication bypass. Well, that's it for today. Today on Thursday, we also have the AI forum, a number of SANS instructors, including myself, talking a little bit about uh, AI and information security. So if you're interested, tune in. You should be able to find it at sans.org slash AI. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.